Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I have been sorting out more of my craft room and I briefly showed some of the, all the die cuts and stuff that I had on a Facebook Live and then I've been meaning to sort them out. So I have, and I have made this partially laminated like file or folio. No, it's not really a fo folio, it's more of a file, concertina file. Now I have these concertina files already on my channel. I made them about three years ago. So I will share them up there. And I do have some really nice laminating projects as well. So you can check those out. You don't have to add the laminated if you don't want to. The reason I've done it is it's mainly so that the snap that I have here has a really nice strong surface to obviously you know because you're putting pressure on that every time you're kind of opening it I just thought if it was just the actual cardstock it might be a bit weak and um, I kept these like I said just with the cardstock I think it works fine it's not going to be something I'm going to be using every single day but I did want them you know to be able to last some time and I think they've turned out really well so I'll just show you again inside there you can see I've got a lot of stuff in here I mean that's just some of the dies and I've put them in little categories so I know I mean you could write in here or put little tabs if you wanted but I've got some of my made to surprise stamps there you'll see some of the again you'll recognize I've got all different there these are all the Christmas ones at the back and I need another one for my new collections and also some of my makeup collection and things like that so let me show you how I made it so the paper pad I'm using is this one which I've shown a couple of times and it just says De design pad it's by craft sensations it doesn't give me any other information apart from you know what you see there so really nice papers for this one I've chosen the kind of palm leaves it's like a tropical paper that one there and then I've just got this one which is also in the pad which I thought matched quite nicely so that's all for the insides and the side of it first of all we're going to put this piece together so it's kind of all deconstructed it's lots of pieces so you should be able to make this out of you know you don't need 12 by 12 papers for it this one here you want two pieces that are six by eight and a half okay so there's my two then for the lid you'll want a piece that is four by eight and a half and then you'll want a piece that's three by eight and a half okay these two pieces here you need to do some scoring along with these bits in a moment so with the one that is four inches wide you want to score at half an inch okay and at two inches and then between the half and the two you want to score at every single score line I'm not going to say every score line it's just easier to do one score line at half an inch one score line at two and then just score along every track in between those two measurements I've already done this I don't know how well you can just make them out there if I flip it over there we go you can see all those score lines we're going to do the same with this one but this time you want to score at three quarters of an inch and two and a quarter so you'll have a three quarter section at both sides and again in between just score on every single track until you join and again if I flip it over because it's easier to see there you go you can see the three quarters of an inch section here and here and then all those score lines in the middle then for the concertina sides you want two pieces that are six by six and a quarter and it's along the six inch side that you want to score every half an inch so half an inch one inch one and a half two two and a half three three and a half four four and a half five and five and a half and do that on both pieces and then for all of the pockets inside you'll want four pieces that are six and a quarter by eight and a quarter okay so that's everything you need okay so with these pieces here you want to fold and burnish the score lines now if you struggle to do all of those little ones what I would say to do is just start to just curve it and you'll you'll find them all start to kind of fall into place and you can kind of pinch them and you'll see the lines there you don't need to do any harsh kind of burnishing but just kind of get them in that shape and it will just give you that nice curved part there on the top so I'm just going to go along this one and this one and just kind of get them in place I've done all of those and then I've also done a concertina fold on both of these so you just basically want to there it is pulled out you're just going to fold start with a mountain then a valley then a mountain valley and just every time I done a fold burnish the score line and then fold again and burnish that score line 
when you fold just keep moving it around burnishing and you should basically end up with this piece here make sure it's nice and straight and you will have a mountain at either end okay because it's these sides here and this that's going to be on the outside so if I flip that one that way you'll see how they're going to go into the little file okay so next we can start putting this together so first of all you want to grab the smaller one so that's the lid where it's got that thicker piece this one here where you've got the three quarter sections on each side this is going to be the front so if it's directional make sure it's facing the right way up and you're going to stick this you're going to pop some glue if i just fold that over that way all on the three quarter inch section and then you're going to stick that to the bottom of the front piece so like so and then i'm just going to line that up and make sure that it runs along the bottom and just move it around a little bit there we go so you'll see i've got the three quarter inch section on the front so just think it, it just decoratively i think it looks quite nice if you don't want it like that and you want more of this then stick it on the inside you don't have to stick it on the outside and then because mine's directional paper i actually want to put this next piece on upside down so that when it comes up around the back it will be facing the right way up okay so if, again if it's directional paper you want to now stick it down upside down so again i'm going to grab glue and just go all the way along there and again I'm just going to line that up just go over to the other side and you can see it running nice and flush with that score line okay so now you'll have this piece that's going to come up like so so for me it doesn't matter at this point which one's the front which one's the back so I'm just going to look I think the designs are exactly the same they are so now with the lid you want to pop your glue on that half inch section so now you see me putting it together this is very easy for you to alter to the size that you want and then I'm just going to lay that one in there like so Okay, and now you'll start to see that's going to come over and lay down like so. Now this would be a good point for you to, if you're going to use the snaps like I have, you don't have to, you might want to just punch a hole and then feed some ribbon through. You might want to add Velcro dots as your closure or even magnets. It's entirely up to you, but if you are using the snaps, I think now's a good time because I didn't do it until I the laminated sheets on top. And although I could still punch the holes, I just found that it probably would be easier to do it now. So you want to decide where you want them to go. Now, another thing with this is you've only got so far to go. However, if you haven't seen the snaps before, well, you're going to see how to use them in a minute, but I have used these on some really nice, like laminating little pockets that I made years ago and some other things. And they're, they're really common in soft crafts um, more than anything, but they work really well on paper crafts as well. But you do have quite a lot of space in here. So I, want, I ended up punching my hole quite far down. I'll show you on this one here. You see how far down, and when I just put that in, you see it doesn't hit. However, I was able to bend that up within this section, and you can see it sits on. It doesn't actually damage because there's that plastic. I mean, I've got a little bit at the front there, but nothing that was going to really hurt it. So. It's up to you. I'm, I'm just thinking actually it might be better to do it still when the plastic's on because that plastic does really stop the tension or do the hole higher. Some of you are probably already saying, well, Sam, why don't you just know it, do it a bit higher? But I just didn't want, I like the, the little, I guess the snap, the popper. I like it closer to this edge rather than kind of floating in the middle here. So if you don't want to put the pressure, then just go as far as that will let you. And you can see, and then you get this pokey tool comes very very sharp and you can just pierce through the plastic and then when you see how to put them on then you can just do that so I think I'm just going to do it the same way that I've done this one because I know it's going to fit um, but if you do want to do any of that then like I said now might be a good time for you to just get the holes in place before you start lam you know laminating it and everything okay so what I want to do next is I've got my laminating pouches here 
and I want to cut off enough to cover this front section which is two inches wide so that's where we started the first score line and the width of this is the width of these laminating sheets which is eight and a half I will link these ones if I can remember but I'll look for the size because if it says eight and a half or whatever that is in centimetres and um, yeah centimetres because that's usually how it's done but all you've got to do is trim just trim the height that you want rather than the, the width of it so I'm just going to cut off where the join is because this is the joined side so again if you're unfamiliar see it's joined together there so I'm just going to grab my trimmer and I'm going to come just a little bit more than two because of the little join that it has there and then get that one cut keep that because you will use the rest of that sheet and then you want to get your laminator turned on. I should have done that before. Let's do that now. So I've just got it here. And I will just pop it just there so you can see it. So I'm just going to get this warmed up. So this is now heated up. I've got it at 150 microns, which is the setting that I need for these particular sheets. And I've also, if you've got a carrier sheet, then pop it in there. I've just got a piece of copy paper here. So you can see there, I've got it on both sides. Just wrapped it around the edge. I'm going to pop it in this here at the end. And you can run this through a few times, you know, so don't worry if it doesn't go the first time. And what I'm going to do with this particular machine, I don't know, again, people have different ones, but I can run it through and then reverse it. So rather than wait for it to go through this whole length, I'm just going to wait till it just starts to pop out this side and then I'm going to reverse it back through. That way it get the double heat on it as well. So it will make sure it's really secure. So it's just touching my finger now. I can feel it. So I'm just going to reverse. Sounds like a truck. <laughs> The lorry's reversing. Okay, so now I can take that away and you'll see I've got a perfectly laminated front there. And once that, again, just reshape it, you'll see I've got that nice strong flap closure for my case. Okay, I've just left that going. So again, excuse that kind of noise for the moment, but get that same piece and you're now going to trim so that you have a piece that is five and a quarter. Again, you don't need to worry about the width. So I'm just going to take this. So I've got five and a quarter. Okay, and then I'm just going to split it open because I only need one side. And again, you'll keep that other one. And then this time, I'll do the front first. I'm going to lay this over the front section and it will perfectly sit in there like so and then with that same piece of copy paper just pop it in there and that means you can you know hold it in place and again run it through and okay so now I've got that front all laminated and then it's just the back and that's completely optional so I'm not going to trim this piece I'm just going to pop it straight down because this back piece is slightly shorter. So if you do want to trim it, then you want to do four and three quarters. But it's just going over into that one inch section there, which is fine. So again, I'm just going to sit that there and just use that same piece. It's just to get it in there, just so it doesn't catch. And this one, I'm just going to let it go right the way through and it can just go over that piece here again. everything laminated now I just think it looks really cool with those sections that aren't next we want to I'm going to now do the the holes so I'm just going to line up this to the two inch score line there and with the pokey tool I'm going to pop a little scratch in the plastic there which I know you guys probably can't see but you want to do it at four and a quarter so I can see that that is about there and then I'm just going to pierce through both layers okay so if you're unfamiliar with the snaps you want two pins okay and I've just realized this color goes perfectly so I'm going to use this one so you want two of the they look like a little you know um, normal pin pin board pin 
and then you'll see the difference between these other parts. So you'll see that one there has like an outy, and this one here has an inny. You see the difference? So you just want one of each. So next you want to grab one of your pins and pop it in the hole. And then I want to grab the outy, okay, and you're going to push it onto that pin as far as you can. And then with your pliers, you'll have a disc. That disc is for the disc of that piece there to sit in. And then you don't need to, it, it actually does a lot of the work for you. Just squeeze it down as much as you can. And there's a metal piece just inside the rubber there. And what it does is it squashes the head of the pin inside this piece. Then with this one, this time the pin goes inside because you don't want to see that and you want the outy on the front and this is now where I just need to kind of curl it up but it's already kind of curled anyway so, so that I can get away with it and then just squeeze that and you'll see again it squashes the pin inside and then it closes and it's really strong I can't believe how perfect that uh, colour matches there actually Okay, so that's now the shell already, and that's so strong, I mean, that's not going anywhere. Next, I want to stick these on. So you want it so that the mountains are all on the outside, okay? Although there's mountains on the inside, but the way that we folded it with these two sections as mountain folds at either end, that's how you want them stuck down. So first of all, I'm going to add my glue. And you could use red liner tape, you don't have to use liquid glue. You want to line up the top of this with that bottom, that last score line here. Okay, and just run it along. And don't worry, it will go into two of the score lines Ooh, at the bottom. That's it's supposed to. I just get this stuck down there and bring it up closer so you can see. Okay, so you see the top there lines up with that score line there, that last one. And then it goes over. I think it's just yeah it goes over the first two you just see them there so don't worry wherever that kind of sits and then you want to do the same on the other side and concentrate on lining it up with that top score line because you want them to be the same along the top here if they're slightly out of the bottom that really isn't going to cause you too much problem Next you want all of those pieces that you would have cut. Now I found sticking them in with my thin red liner tape best because I've cut them slightly shorter than the full width of this because when you have these kind of concertina sides, if you make this the same width as this, it will end up bowing all of the pieces inside and it doesn't quite, it doesn't look as good. So if you get just a double sided tape or something that's thin, because again you don't want any adhesive visible, that might you know end up sticking to whatever it is that you're going to pop in the pockets you only need to put it on one side you know you don't need to go like on the front and the back but you do need to do both ends so I'm just going to pop this along the four of them and you're going to you'll see you get this valley this first one here you want to attach it onto there so I'm going to fold that first one over so it's flat okay you're not doing anything within this bit so fold that first one down and then you just want to make sure this lines up with the top and just come away from the side you know about one eighth of an inch just a smidge got some of my adhesive showing there obviously went off the edge there we go and then just run it down and it will line up with the bottom Put them all on top of each other like that so you know it's nice and straight and then bring the same one over that side and let it just fall down and it will perfectly sit in there and then if I lift this up you've got your first you've got that back pocket there so again if I get this one now I'm going to fold down the next one and I'm going to sit this again don't go right up to that score line just go about so you're about one eighth of an inch away from it you just get a much nicer finish. Bring everything over, fold that one down, the same as the one before, and let it fall down. 
And again, you'll see when it is flat, you don't get any of that cardstock bowing. It's nice and straight and flat. So just repeat that process. Okay, now when you get to the end, you should be left with, you see there, one mountain and then this tab. You now just want to put glue on the sides here and then you're going to fold this piece over and it, you know, if you've got any curl to it like I have or curve curl, it will end up all flattening out in a moment once this all sticks down. And then again, you want to make sure the top lines up with the top of that so you'll have, you know, a gap at the bottom, which is what you want. Okay, so that's all done. So just open it up so you can see here and you'll see all of the compartments all ready for me to fill. You can, you know, customise this. You might want to, you know, cut some die cut letters and pop them on there first and then laminate it. You know, there's a lot more you can do with this. When you first made them, you'll see this curves at the bottom because there's nothing in it. But once you fill it, it completely flattens out so nothing's going to fall out of it. So you can see a slight difference there with the bases. So yeah, I'm super pleased with these. They're just, and they're going to store in my bookcase really nicely. I mean, I could even put something down on the spines there as well. But I mean, I, these are for me, I know what's in them, so I don't really need to do too much customising or labelling and so on. But so I hope you've enjoyed this fun laminating project from me today. It's going to go into the craft room kind of organisation playlist. I know I've had some really nice messages from many of you who are just kind of rearranging your craft spaces. You've just got new craft rooms and you're looking at new ways to organise things. So hopefully this will be something that's useful as well. So thanks for watching and I'll be back very soon. Bye.